What's up, y'all? Welcome to The Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you Hippo players the best first four moves that you can play to start the game off. So y'all, the Hippopotamus defense is a great system, right? I mean, really what we're trying to do is fianchetto both of our bishops on g7 and our light-scored bishop on b7, put our central pawns on the sixth rank of e6 and d6, tuck our knights closely behind, and oftentimes throw on very important moves like h6 and a6. That being said, when I first started playing the hippo, I often said, I mean, the move order doesn't matter a ton, and oftentimes it doesn't. But that being said, I do think that there is a best way to start the game off, which is going to help us get our feet running and really help us going forward. It's gonna help us avoid chess opening traps and help get our king castled if we need to quickly. Here are the first four moves in order. This works against almost anything. I'm gonna show what it doesn't work against. And uh, okay, I mean, let's just get it going. So if a move like e4, I actually recommend you guys write this down. Move one, g6, okay? Again, I don't care what you're playing. If you play e4, c4, d4, play whatever you want. I'm playing g6. Next move, I'm playing bishop g7. Okay, so move number two, bishop g7. Move number three, d6. And then finally, knight d7. Okay, now the reason that I like this move order is that really right now we're playing a modern defense. First off, white is probably going to think that we're playing a modern, and they're going to be very inclined to play moves like e4 and d4 going into a two-pawn setup, which is exactly what we want. On top of that, we're prioritizing king side development. Why is this important? Well, going back to the start of the game, notice it's actually going to take us more time and more work to castle queen side than king side. And oftentimes in the hippo, we do castle queen side. In fact, I've covered games on this channel, games I've played where I castle queen side. But all that being said, if white really puts the pressure on us and we need to castle quickly, it's a lot easier and a lot faster to castle king side. So that is why I prioritize my king side development, get that dark squared bishop uh, fianchettoed. And then from this point, I'm looking to play knight d7. However, again, there is one exception to the one, two, three, four rule. Okay. And that is if you see this move of bishop c4. If you have an opponent who has a knight on f3 and a bishop on c4, y'all do not, I repeat, do not play knight d7. Okay. This is uh, basically just losing on the spot because now white has this trap of bishop takes f7 with check. Okay. Usually we don't got to worry about this, but obviously with the bishop here and a knight here, knight g5 is on the way. If we play king f8, I mean, we have a king on f8 and we're down the f pawn. I don't think anyone really likes that position for black. Um, I mean, that's just completely losing. And if we take the bishop, it's actually even worse because now white's able to play knight g5 attacking our king. Notice if we play a move like king f8, knight e6 check, our queen is forked along with our king. I mean, we might as well just throw in the towel. Going back to knight g5, if we play a move like king e8, knight e6, our queen cannot even move. And finally, going back, if a move like king f6, um, you know, going up, going up one move. Um, okay, I mean, yes, we did save our queen, but we have a king on f6, and we run into queen f3 with mate. Y'all, we simply have a game over. So all that being said, you know, this whole one, two, three, four, you know, move order works really well, except against a knight on f3 and a bishop on c4. If you do see this, though, just, just close this bishop down, right? Play this move e6. Very simple. This bishop you know, can't really see the pawn f7 at all now. And then from this point, we're just going to continue developing. In fact, at this point, you know, we're really limiting the activity of this bishop on c4. And if white continues to try to attack us like crazy with a move like bishop g5, there's no reason to freak out here. Okay, don't play a move like knight f6. You're going to run into e5. Don't play a move like f6. We don't want all these pawns advanced that much, especially this f pawn. Just continue with normal play, right? Play knight e7. What is going to happen now? Not much. I mean, if, if white wants to give us the bishop pair, go ahead. And if they don't, we'll just play a move like h6. I actually like playing a6 against this bishop on c4, trying to get b5 with tempo kicking it back. And here, if white prevents that, okay, we play b6. We got bishop b7, knight d7 on the way. We have g5 ideas whenever we'd like kicking this bishop back to g3. And we're in business, as always. Thanks for watching this video. Let me down down in the comment section below what other kind of hippo content you'd want to see. And as always, wishing you guys a great day. Peace.